I'd be home by nine Hell, I tell her that most of the time Whoa, whoa, baby, don't know on her too much Whoa, I'll tell her where, but I won't say why Oh, now, now I'm dancing, oh, I'm dancing I'm dancing with the devil Hey guys, welcome back to another structure build video for the Otter Creek and Rio Grande. So what I'm gonna get started on is the cobbler building, which is this building here, and was originally mocked up with this building. And so the primary thing I'm looking at for this building is this storefront. So that is gonna have to come from this titchy window set here, a storefront set. So I've got that laid out, and the first thing that I figured out is that these are considerably wider, I think, than what I originally mocked my building up as. Uh, which I don't think it's gonna cause me any problems, uh, at least other than, you know, it might make a little bit of difference, you know, in the relationship in the street here, but because this building is on the far end, if I end up coming out an extra, you know, three scale feet, it's I don't think it's gonna cause me any problems at all. So, the question, of course, is how do I get from here to my block of wood that I have proposed that I make this out of? And now this block of wood here, this is one that I already had laying around. I've had laying around for a couple, three years. It looked like it was going to work. It's a little bit longer, a little bit taller than my mock-up. Uh, and it's also a little bit wider, but I don't think it's gonna be wide enough. So to get started on this, the first thing I wanna do, I believe, is to backwards engineer this storefront to figure out the footprint of it and then how much of the building is going to lay over on either side of the storefront. I'm not looking for a lot, I'm looking for a maximum of two scale feet on either side of these windows. And of course, these two windows are gonna be at an angle going into the, the double doors. And I think the original, it's kind of hard to tell, but I'm thinking the original door here on this building probably a single door. I don't think that I can turn this into a single door. It might be possible. I might consider that. But at any rate, uh, I'm definitely going to use these titchy windows to get started and, and backwards engineer some things. Now, one thing I will point out that when you get this uh, titchy storefront 8117, it says two sets with glazing HO scale. When it says two sets, it, it really means two sprues. You're gonna get two sprues in this kit and you can build one double storefront and then you get this left over and I think there might be a little bit left over on the other sprue, but, but you're not getting two full storefronts. So I'm just gonna throw that out there because if, if you're purchasing, you know, two of these thinking that you're getting four, you're not. So keep that in mind. There might be something on the website that lets you know that. I obviously didn't see it if there was, but uh, now you know. So the first little bit of in progress here I want to talk about are these doors. And 
So the first thing I noticed when I went to put them together is that the doors themselves have a significant gap if you put them all the way to either side of the door frame. So, and then they are extremely flimsy. So what I did is I came in with just a little bit of evergreen plastic on the back side and a little bit on the bottom side to kind of lend some strength to the whole thing. And so, you know, what's back behind there should just look like a door jam, uh, if that's the right terminology. So that's the first thing I did. Now, I decided that in order to keep the building as narrow as possible, because I do want it narrow, is that I wanted my, my storefront to be at a 90 degree angle so that the door itself will come in like this. Because I think that's what the prototype kind of looked to me like. Uh, regardless, that's what mine is gonna be. So in order to get the door glued in here, uh, I added this little bit of evergreen plastic so that I've got something to glue to uh, substantial, just kind of like, you know, standard uh, building practices if you've got something to glue both sides to. And I had to make that. I didn't have the right size uh, strip styrene or square styrene uh, to go with that. Uh, definitely need to get online tonight and kind of increase my my plastic supplies so that I've got stuff readily available to work with. So that's where I'm at now is just uh, notching this off and then doing the same thing on the other side and getting this thing put together. So here is the finished storefront and really all in all it went together pretty good and it's not perfectly 90 degrees everywhere but I think that I, it's, it's bendy enough that I can you know fix that when I actually put it on the plastic. So the next step is making a decision on the overall width of the building. I can't remember if I mentioned it in my opening uh, verbal assault on you, <laughs> but uh, I, I plan to make this a cassette, so to speak, that you notch out the right amount of the front of this building, that cassette, will sit down into. And I think, you know, this is uh, right at 15 foot three inches, which it would just work out perfect for me for it to be an odd number that nobody wants, 15 foot three inches, really. Uh, but if I figure out the overall width of the building, I think the next step is to figure out the depth of the cassette, right now I'm thinking eight foot. You know, from, from here back eight foot. And then I've got some space in here that I could put uh, some fake looking shoe racks or something just, you know, to kind of catch the eye a little bit. And that should give me about three foot of distance beyond the door 
all of that will be painted black except for you know whatever displays right in front of the window and then figure out how this also sets in front of you know the storefront because the storefront is going to come on like this right so how the windows fit into the storefront also has to be accounted for so i think it's figuring out the cassette then figuring out the storefront and then figuring out the dimensions of this after that hope that makes sense so here is the rough cassette if you will and i've got it all boxed out uh, the only bad thing about going ahead and putting the sides on it now is that these windows here on the inside, they're gonna be a little tricky to get the glazing in, but I think it it's doable. And then once I get the interior completed, then I can come back in and seal it up on the back side. Now this will work as a setup block for the table saw that will help me get both the, the width of the building and the height so that once the rough portion of the building is created, this will slide in just like that. And I'm gonna use clapboard siding. And then, so this will, will sit in inside the wood just like that. And then this gets laminated over the top and will get super glued onto the plastic portion of the building. And then when the, the front, you know, facade of the building gets put on, it will only come down right through here and it will get super glued right there. And then that corner right there will get uh, some square stock and it should work pretty good. So I think the next step is to go ahead and do some tuba four work. Tuba four. Or for you people in the Northeast, two by four. All right, I've got the substructure for the building here and it's uh, about ready to start, you know, chipping away at it and getting the length and the width that I want. And so I wanna go back to the original mock-up and the original mock-up was uh, right at 15 feet wide. And the new storefront here I ended up pushing that out to 18. So I like the proportions of this. So I think what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna have to come out three feet wider at the front of the building, I'm gonna go ahead and add three feet to the back. That shouldn't cause me any problems in the overall dimensions of the layout. And I'm not sure about the height yet. Uh, I'm probably going to take a look at that after I get the width and kind of go from there. So the original width of the building, the, the main structure, was 26 feet. So I'm going to make mine 29. Now the first thing I need to do is get rid of the imperfections. So I'm going to take off just a sliver here on the table saw before I determine the actual width. Now, kind of the downside of doing things this way is, you know, you've got a lot of height here with this, so your, your saw blade ends up coming out of the table uh, quite a little bit, so that's something to consider, uh, being a little more careful maybe than normal. And then also, always start by making sure that your saw blade 
is square with the table because the higher that blade goes, the more imperfection uh, becomes apparent in your work surface. So all that's good to go. I just need to zip a little off there. concept confirmed so this is gonna work unfortunately my little plastic box here didn't end up being completely square but uh, that's not gonna be any big deal when I go to glue it in I'll just need to make sure that everything is flush with the front of the box which will give me a little gap here uh, not gonna be seen not gonna cause any problems so this is how I'm going to approach all of my storefronts uh, moving forward with Silver Gulch, at least on the buildings that I plan to use solid blocks of wood on, which is going to be the smaller buildings. I'm pretty sure I have decided that the larger buildings, I'm going to use plywood, like 3 8 plywood, instead of solid blocks of wood, especially the taller ones. Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how that goes moving forward, but this is gonna work. Next step is to figure out some kind of interior in here that will, you know, give you just a little bit of something to see in the windows and some depth to the front of the building. So let's see what we're gonna do there. I'm gonna do a voiceover here, kind of as I work towards the interior. I decided I needed some, some shelves and I started with a six foot by four foot shelving unit. And what I'm using here is HO scale two by eights, evergreen plastic, item number 8208. And I just marked along the six foot section uh, 18 inches, so they're all a foot and a half apart from each other, and marked in pencil, and left a little overhang on the six foot part of it. And it's just real easy to butt joint these things together and kind of get them lined up where you want them. The process is a little slow, but uh, it's it's pretty easy to do. It's just a matter of patience and doing some measuring with your scale ruler and then moving everything around just a touch before you glue and a little bit of pressure. And then you snip off the overhang after you're finished and you have a four foot by six foot shoe shelf. 
Now, I kind of racked my brain a little bit trying to figure out exactly how I could replicate shoes on a shelf. And I just, I gave up and decided that, you know, maybe in addition to being a shoe store, maybe they also sell other kinds of commodities. So all I've done here is gone in with some, uh, some other stock. I'm, I'm using uh, scale six by eight, scale six by 12, uh, some 16th inch rod and some uh, 3 seconds inch tubing and just kind of made different shapes with, with those little bits of plastic that I've cut and gluing in there on top of the shelves. It's a little time consuming, but you know, if you just cut random shapes all at once and kind of have them out there on the table to grab with tweezers, it goes pretty quick. You know, the gluing process is really simple. Uh, I'm using the Mr. Mr. Cement plastic, plastic model cement. It's a little, I guess, noxious as far as the odor goes, but it, it does work really well. The odor doesn't bother me too much, but it works really good. Now the next thing I did was go in with some flat black and just give everything a nice base coat of black. And I really probably didn't need to use an airbrush, but I'm trying to, to use the airbrush uh, in every application that I can, just so I get a little bit better at it. And you know, my biggest issue with the airbrush, my hand cramps. Every time I use it for any period of time at all, uh, getting it to fit comfortably in my hand is my biggest issue. Because if it's not comfortable in your hand, then you can't apply the trigger the way you really want to. And once I got everything base coated in black, I went in with white and did what's called a xenophall fade, if you will. I'm not sure if that's a, a term used in anything other than miniature painting, but essentially all I'm doing is doing a top-down painting of white. And you, you do this for a couple different reasons. One is that it, it kind of reveals everything in a way that you can see it a little bit better when you go to paint it. And it shows you where the light should possibly reflect off of whatever it is that you're, you're painting. And I might've gotten a little too heavy on this, uh, but there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can either do it by uh, painting it dark and then overspraying top down with white. You can also, you know, do like a, a gray color and then you can wash in with a, with a black wash and just make it to where you can see everything that you paint. Now, when you do paint, one of the first things you'll figure out, especially if you're doing any kind of miniature painting or little bits painting, you'll figure out that the color that you were painting changes dramatically if it's on black versus white uh, and, and or gray for that matter. But, you know, if you paint red on top of black, you're gonna get a different kind of red than if you paint red over white and there will be a significant difference. So that being said, you know, if you've got part of what you're painting already white and part of it black, you're gonna get a natural fade out of your paint, uh, especially if you're using nice thin paint. So that's, that's why you do that, is it, it helps create natural shadows and highlights on what you're painting. Well, there it is. The storefront for the most part is finished. And you know, I apologize for not being able to film any of this stuff, but I really have to have my uh, my head 
four inches above the model with magnifying glasses on to do any of this kind of work. So all, all I've done is spray painted it white, uh, airbrushed it white, and then I've gone in and put some Victorian paper, wallpaper, on the wall. And you can see I've painted the little bits on the shelves. And that should add just a little bit of depth. I've done some light brown wash to kind of bring out the details in the doors. And I don't know how well you guys can, can see that, you know, on camera. Uh, I tried to pick out a color that was kind of that blue color in there in the wallpaper tried to pick it out for the front of the store and now you can't tell here but there are individual boards in there i really did not like the way that turned out uh, making wood out of plastic is a whole nother art that i'm gonna have to work on i've got a few signs in the windows and there you go uh, now the next step which i'm not going to do on this video but the plan is something like this and it's really probably not going to show up but if i can add just a little more depth to the building then it should work out real good. So there will be at least one more video uh, to this particular structure. We'll see how that goes. I should be able to finish up in one video. So thanks for watching Otter Creek and Rio Grande, and we will see you again.